the Bose. Smart Soundbar 600 features cutting-edge technology in a small package. Notably, it extends the traditional left-center-right driver layout to include height channels, producing a broad sound field with superb spatial audio imaging. Additionally, it supports Google Cast, Apple AirPlay 2, and Amazon's Alexa Voice Assistant. The soundbar's audio balance is pushed toward the high mids and highs without a subwoofer. Though, this reduces bass response in favor of easier understanding of dialogue, while the Sonos Beam lacks high channels and strong bass as well. It has many of the same capabilities, is less expensive, and has a more even sound signature. Small in size, the Smart Soundbar 600 is 6.9 pounds in weight and is 2.2 by 27.3 by 4.1 inches. The Sonos Beam has dimensions that are similar to those. It should fit simply and comfortably in front of all televisions save those with the lowest seating positions because it is short enough. Simple in design, the soundbar is a black rectangle with slightly rounded corners. A second, smaller grille is integrated into the top panel for the upward firing drivers, and a metal grille surrounds the front, sides, and top of the vehicle. On the front, a silver Bose logo occupies the center position. When Alexei is listening or the microphone is muted, LED in the upper left corner glow. On the top panel to the left of the grille, there are two touch-sensitive buttons, one to summon Alexa and one to activate the microphone. The soundbar itself has no volume controls. Two base ports on the back of the soundbar are located closer to the sides, and in the middle is a recess with physical connections, 3.5 mm connectors for an optional subwoofer, an IR blaster, an HDMI port for eARC, an optical port for Toslink, a micro USB port for service, and a port for the power cable are among the straightforward wired alternatives. A little black card with dimensions of 4.1 by 1.6 by 0.5 inches serves as the bundled remote. The various controls are indicated in a rubberized top panel. Along with the volume rocker, the remote control features buttons for power, input, Bluetooth, music mode, mute, and play or pause. You can use the remote to manage the soundbar if you don't want to utilize the Bose Music app but you'll probably use the TV volume controls instead. The Smart Soundbar 600 supports Dolby Atmos despite its diminutive size. The soundbar has two height drivers that point straight up through the grille on the top panel, two left and right drivers that are aimed out the sides, and a single forward firing tweeter for the sender channel audio and dialogue. Although optical audio is supported, the Smart Soundbar 600 is primarily made to be used with the TV via an ER connection. It supports Apple AirPlay 2, Google Cast, and Spotify Connect for wireless connectivity, and it features Bluetooth and Wi-Fi as well. Additionally, it functions as a smart speaker. Amazon Alexa is directly included. However, Google Assistant can only be used when coupled with a different Google Assistant-enabled device, like the Nest Audio. You must use the Bose Music app to configure and manage the soundbar beyond its limited number of remote-based features. Using this software, you may combine several Bose speakers, change sources, and adjust the audio. There isn't much room for sound adjustment. It has a switch for dialogue mode, a preset for wall EQ for when the soundbar is mounted on the wall, a few timing and delay options for synchronizing the soundbar with the TV image, simple EQ for bass and treble, and controls for balancing the center and height channels. Any compact soundbar cannot be expected to produce tremendous bass, and the Smart Soundbar 600 is no exception. It struggles with deep lows but can fill a room with a wide sound field of low mids to highs. In our bass test track, the nice silent shout, the kick drum impacts, and bass and notes come through with minimal force in higher settings, and the drums noticeably distort when the volume approaches 75%. At higher volumes, some digital signal processing kicks in to tame those frequencies. Yet at roughly half volume, the recording actually sounds broader and deeper. Even on songs with less sub-bass content, like this roundabout, the weak bass is audible. The first few acoustic guitar chords have a lot of high-frequency presence, which gives the sound a strong sense of string texture. But it also comes off as a little harsh because there isn't much low-mid resonance to offset it. The bass line pops and sounds far away when the track starts up properly. While the higher frequencies of the guitars and vocals stand out in the background, it makes a crackly sound. It doesn't appear to make any difference to increase the bass using the Bose Music app. The soundbar's audio might be slightly balanced by adding a subwoofer, although at a higher cost. Considering the broad audio field the Bose Smart Soundbar 600 can produce, it is a soundbar with excellent technological capabilities. 
The upward firing high channels and wide firing mains contribute to a broad sound profile that impresses more with movies than music. However, without a dedicated subwoofer, its bass performance is pitifully subpar, and as a standalone home theater system, its crisp performance leaves plenty to be desired. The Sonos Beam performs somewhat better with low frequencies for a little less money. For less than the cost of the Bose or Sonos soundbars, the Roku Streamer Pro, which lacks Dolby Atmos and voice capabilities, offers a stronger, more balanced sound that can be connected with its own subwoofer. With upward firing drivers for height based spatial audio, the Bose Smart Soundbar 600 is a compact speaker with a ton of capabilities. However, its highs can be harsh and its bass response is frequently underwhelming. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please like it if you did. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. Wishing you all the best until the next video.